Chapter 3. Is there a God? Is there a God? We have that question asked more often than any other question today. Science has given a great deal of attention and thought in recent years to this subject and is really doing a magnificent work in research along this line. The research was suggested by a group of medical scientists and it has been in progress for several years now. Of course, there is a very great determination that there is a great principle back of all experiences. This goes back so far that all continuity of it has been lost through the ages. We are coming to realize that as has always existed and does exist today and nothing can move that principle out of absolute law and order. The greatest question humanity has asked and is still asking, is, is there a God? From an orthodox point of view it is accepted on faith that there is a God, a divinity called the Father of Man. In this way we are speaking for a great division of humanity. Yet, in no way satisfied with believing on faith alone, they ask to know, have you irrefutable proof of the existence of divinity? It has been the task of science to investigate the matter and find the answer to the question, an answer which will satisfy the rational mind. Through scientific investigation in recent years it has been discovered that there is a universal force, which is also termed universal energy, a primal energy, pervading the entire universe and filling infinite space. Today we are finding that the energy that that principle manifests is greater than the atomic bomb. That energy emanates throughout all space, all conditions, and all things. It is not given just to one person or to one group, it is all in all and it belongs to everyone. It works with everybody, whether we realize it or not. The non-realization of it makes no difference whatever. It is not concealed under books or in dark places. It is ever-present, omnipresent, pervading all things. It is the very substance and principle from which we live and move and have our being. Were it not for that very principle, that divinity in every person, we would not be able to take a picture of this group. Experience has proved this. This divine principle has residence within and permeates everything, every method of life and experience. It is that divine influence, that divine energy which is permanent, everlasting, all-encompassing. We have proved that through photography, for were it not for that divine energy, no photograph could be taken. The pictures recorded on a film are simply the emanating vibrations coming from the object or person of whom the picture is taken. This is proof of the divinity within each form. If we seek that divinity from without, we fail to find it, for we are looking outside ourselves for that which is as near to us as our hands and feet, as close to us as our heart, right within us. If we will go within, we will find divinity in all phases. Then why waste our time searching without for God? It is the same with the masters, or elder brothers. They are right here, within every form. They are as near to us as our heart. You do not have to travel to India or to any other country to see these masters. You can see them right where you are. When the student is ready the master will appear. It is well known today that through a greater civilization, many, many ages past, a great reservoir, as it is called, was built up of the principles and God qualities and attributes that have been generated and manifested through countless eons of time, and that reservoir of good cannot be invaded by any condition of negative whatsoever. The mighty reservoir or momentum of God good energy and pristine purity stands there for all time and the instant we think of that great vibrating, pulsating principle we become aware of it right within ourselves. That vast reservoir of good stands ready and waiting for our use at all times. We have but to tune into it, to become at one with it. Now that energy has been called by the name, God, the word that is receptive to the greatest vibratory influence known today. When we use that word in its right meaning, and it can be used in no other way to have any influence, we act upon all substance, we act upon every principle, we act upon all law and order, and that which we pronounce in good form is already ours. Just as Jesus said, before ye have asked I have answered, and while ye are speaking I have heard. Think of it. Because we have sent forth in definite order and definite form, the word, at that instant that which we state belongs to us. There is no time or space. It is well known today that perfection never could be created. It always was and is. If we think through our expressions to create perfection we go outside of ourselves completely, because perfection is already created and is here and now, therefore, by using the right words, right thoughts, right actions, every word impinges upon that great vibratory influence. The thought first and then the word expressed. 
In our Bible it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. As we learn to throw out every negative thought, feeling, word, and action, we conserve that energy within our own form. The moment we speak a negative word we are dissipating God's pure and perfect energy, therefore, the more we learn to discipline ourselves to think, feel, speak, and act positively and constructively, the more of this potent energy do we generate to fulfill our calls and manifest perfection. Every statement made by Jesus manifested here and now. In his world there was no future, all was now. In the original language there is no word for the future, there is no word for the past. Every word in that language is the expression of here and now. In like manner it is known today that every word we speak under positive, constructive influence is recorded and it never goes out of existence. The very definite statement, I am God, is a determining factor in carrying humanity onward. With that ideal we progress. Each individual may prove this statement for himself. It is the one who can project an ideal, and then hold his vision true to it, who accomplishes, in many cases unconscious of how he has done so. Worship is not an idle action. It is necessary to put forth an effort to realize the ideal. That ideal held completely in thought must come forth in form. The thought in itself brings the thing into visible form. That vision projects so definitely that it is called from the source of all being and consolidated in its entirety. A clearly presented vision precedes it. It is important to hold to one condition at a time. Never permit your thoughts to wander at random or even to project another form until the first one has been accomplished. After the action is completed, let the thought go completely and turn to the next action. This is the definite understanding which Jesus had. Ye are gods, and sons of the Most High. That was his thought regarding the fact of human existence. Always the highest, always the noblest, always the purest, always light. Never anything that might limit life and energy. Never failing, never doubting. Always the same singleness of purpose directing thought. This projected vision can carry humanity above any fear or discordant condition of thought, can keep humanity always at that level of high accomplishment, going from lesser to a greater field of usefulness. Such is the progression of our planetary system. The suns of all solar systems express in that way drawing energy to themselves that greater energy may be given out. If our sun were a great lump of coal, it would sometime be consumed. No, it has existed for hundreds of millions of years. It draws to itself force, power, energy, making it available to our world as well as others. Man must learn the same lesson of the exchange of energy. The moment we withhold our forces, stagnation takes place. But, if we give forth of what we have, the new always flows in to refill the space left by what was given out. The energy is inexhaustible if we use it in the right way and in the right direction. That is why this body of ours is renewed. If that energy is without us, it is also within us. If divinity is without, then we cannot keep it from within. All that one need do is to make of himself a channel for the divine force. It is always pulsating and cannot be depleted. This is the essential explanation of man's immortality. There is an immortality to every thought, every act, and every word. There is a coalescing force which man cannot escape. What man generates and emanates accomplishes the fact which has always existed. The fact of all being has always existed in spirit without beginning or end. Man always questions the nature of beginning. It is not easy to conceive of anything without an origin. As far as man is concerned, beginning came into being with conscious or separate identity. Before that man was spirit, and that state is one to which we shall return. The new attitude toward science and religion will enable us to realize the better things which have been promised. They are here now when we shall have opened ourselves to receive them. God is in no way the form of a human being. God is that supreme intelligent power that permeates every form and every atom of the whole universe. When you realize that supreme intelligent power is fully centralized within your form, you are that power, and by fully acknowledging that this power acts through you, you are that power. Each and every individual has the ability to be that power. This is the God Kingdom into which every individual is born in, as soon as all see and know this, all are of God's Kingdom. Question and Answers Question, what is the first law? Answer, the first law is I am. That is the lost word. We are beginning to realize it. God I am. 
Question, I should like to know more about the IAM as the masters presented it to you. Answer, IAM is the second word in the language. It means the complete acceptance that you are God. God I am. The word, God, is the first, because of its greatest vibration, and then your acceptance as, I am. Question, what is the Holy Ghost? Answer, the Holy Ghost means the whole of the I am spirit in complete action in every form. Question, how does one bring forth the Christ? Answer, the Christ must be born within each one. Jesus gave us the example of this. You bring forth that which is within you by turning your attention to and concentrating upon that very thing. The Christ is within you. Question, if these masters you write about are able to leave their bodies, how is it that so few people know about it? Answer, because people don't believe it. They do not leave the body, that is an expression which is used so that it can be understood. They take their bodies with them. Question, have you ever contacted Saint Germain? Answer, we know of Saint Germain and know of his life. It was a great life. No one know that Saint Germain ever went through death. My adopted brother and I had an interesting experience in this connection. He was engaged in a great government engineering project in this country. After he left that, Paris cabled him to come over there. They had under advisement the draining of a great swamp back of the city of Paris and making it a fertile country for gardens. As they proceeded with that, the Seine began to encroach upon Saint Germain's tomb and they realized they would have to move it. He cabled me and suggested I come over, as they would probably open the casket and we could view the remains. I went over. The casket was opened and in the casket was found only the thigh bone of a dog. Now think of the thousands of healings that went on in that place. They put all of their thoughts upon the accomplishment of Saint Germain, they lost all track of their infirmities, and complete perfection took place. Now that is so with nearly every one of the shrines today. Question, when we wish something that is ours by divine right, is it right to demand it? Answer, if anything is yours by divine right, there will be no need to demand it. Our own acceptance of illusions negates the good that we want. When you give expression to the divine nature within you, you will find whatever you will use at hand. The realization of this permits you to know that the good is accomplished before you express the thought. The need does not have to arise. Chapter 4. Life Eternal. From a select amoeba the divine image never changes. It dominates the ideal and perfect form and passes on that perfect form unchanged to every new cell that is created in the entire form. Thus every cell of the bodies of the entire human race not only has the perfect but is the perfect image of supreme intelligence. Thus we have the unassailable proof that man or humanity is the divine, supreme intelligence, which is God, the conquering Christ, God-man, the result of the complete coalition of the Trinity. Indeed, every seed has the exact image of that which it will produce. Now let us sit quietly and look directly at this select amoeba and its ability to reproduce and send forth and unerringly implant its perfect image into every cell that, through multiplication, forms not only the human form but every tree, every blade of grass, every flower, every crystal, and every rock, as well as every grain of sand. In fact, by the close examination of crystals, all rock structure can readily be classified. It is thus with every grain of sand as well as with all minerals. This crystallization is the foundation from which we learn their relationship to the whole and their relationship and economic value to humanity. Let us return again to the high magnification and rapid photography which is being developed. We find that the minutest seed, when its germ cell is photographed under high magnification, has the exact form of that which it will produce and bring forth unerringly, and it is giving off a wavelength or a vibratory frequency which accompanies it throughout its circle of productivity. And through its frequency of vibration it attracts to itself the energy that is necessary for its development into maturity, and this frequency of vibration, which is the divine life essence which accumulates or draws to itself the substance, not only gives life to the tree, the flower, and all vegetable life, as well as all minerals and metallic substance but it is the very life of the substance. Now we are free to say that all substance has life expressing through it. And there is no change from that divine plan of perfection until man, through his thoughts, either enhances or debauches the perfection. It is also found that man is able to influence these emanations of perfection to a larger and greater productivity of presenting greater and greater thoughts of productivity and more abundant perfection. 
Let us return again to the amoeba or first cell. While this cell is entirely different from that of the vegetable or mineral, its rate of vibration is much greater and is not to be compared with that of the mineral or animal. It is found that its rate of vibration is the force that draws its energy or substance to itself, which causes its growth into new cells, which finally builds a human form, and the passing on to every cell created the first perfect and undeviating form of divinity. It now can definitely be seen that when humanity cooperates and in no way, through thought or expression, interferes with the ideal of divinity, the human form is ideally perfect. Thus we can say that it is God body, pure and perfect. Let us see that divine energy and intelligent principle emanating from the single cell or amoeba, which its own principle of great vibratory frequency began drawing energy to itself and then began dividing and multiplying until it came into a great focal point or form, wherein it could emanate and direct all forms as well as put forth forms as of the image of itself. Humanity has never deviated from that perfect pattern or image. Photography shows those perfect forms, not only surrounding every form, but also other perfect forms coming forth. Where the scientists lack evidence, we have forged ahead to the complete knowing that we are that great emanating frequency. Sit quietly for a few moments with the statements, God I am, as all are, God I am divine intelligence, and know, and then admit to yourself, with all doubt removed, I am divine principle, I am divine love, and it flows through me to all the world. Then see yourself as God and everyone you meet or see, as God, and you will see that which is being accomplished in the sub-microscopic zone of life, for you will see an almost invisible drop of protoplasm that is transparent, jelly-like, capable of motion, drawing energy from the sun. It is already capable of using the light of the sun to break up the carbon dioxide in the air, forcing the atoms apart, seizing the hydrogen from the water and producing carbohydrates, thus making its own food out of one of the world's most stubborn chemical compounds. This single cell, this transparent droplet, holds within itself the germ of all life. It not only has the germ but it has the power to distribute this life to all living things, great and small, and it also fits that creature to its environment wherever life exists, even from the bottom of the ocean to the universe above. Time and environment have molded the form of every living thing so that it meets the infinite variety of all conditions, and as these living things develop their individuality, they sacrifice some of their flexibility to change and become specialized and fixed, losing the power to go back but gaining a better and greater adjustment to the conditions as they exist. The power of this droplet of protoplasm and its contents is greater than the vegetation that clothes the earth in green, greater than all of the animals that breathe the breath of life, for all life comes from it and without it no living thing would have been or could be. You will find that all of this is absolute truth, step by step. Humanity will know, as we know, that man is the universal source of life. Man is master in the animal as well as in the vegetable and mineral kingdoms, completely endowed with supreme intelligence, in reality, the soul of all things. This divine intelligence man has never lost. He has only become shamefully unaware of this true God heritage through the setting up of his own debased thought structure. It is well at this point to stop and let go of, forget and forgive this debased thought structure, and set up a real structure as man, the supreme intelligence, the master of all things, God and man, one. An amoeba is a microscopic highly developed living cell composed of untold millions of atoms in orderly arrangement. Size is nothing to the infinite. The atom is as perfect as the solar system. This cell divides and forms two. The two divide and form four, and so on, ad infinitum, as cells do in every living creature. Each cell contains within itself the power to produce a complete individual. The cells themselves are immortal. They form the cells of all creatures, animal and vegetable of today, and are exact replicas of their progenitors. We, as all humanity, are well-ordered replicas of billions on billions of similar cells, each cell a citizen intelligently doing its full quota of devoted service. This one cell also has the power to use sunlight to break up a chemical compound and make its own food and enough for its brother cell. You will find that this division is absolutely basic as one of the essentials of life itself. Can it be further denied that man is immortal here, when there is proof of divinity as immortality? All things that live start from a single cell and this cell compels all of its descendants to perform the service and follow without deviation the design of the creature the original cell is to duplicate, whether it be a human, a turtle, or a rabbit. 
It is found that these cells have distinct intelligence, instinct as well as reasoning power, as it is well known that after division, portions of the cells are forced to change an entire nature to meet the requirements of that being of which they are a part. Why? Because the plan is set forth and is invincible to change and that is the reason that man is divine, perfect, and invincible. It does not matter what thinking structure he evolves, this plan is absolutely irresistible and can never be changed, it is first principle, dominant and compelling, and is also the very reason that man is capable and abundantly able to reach the highest. In the event that he fails to reach the highest in his immediate understandings, all that is necessary is for him to change his thought structure, which has circumvented him, to the true thought structure that is steadfastly fixed within his own mind, of which he always has an inherent instinct, and build a dominant thought structure which will allow him to reach to the highest conception to which thoughts can aspire. His easiest and most successful way of attainment to this highest goal is forever to let go or drop the thought structure that has bound him to the wheel of repetition and set into immediate action that which will build up an invincible thought structure which will never fail in carrying him to the highest. The first suggestion is to place in his mind the thought and word, God, knowing positively that it is the one point from which and where all success originates, also from which all success emanates. Then fix that thought of success with the thought, God I am success. Then the next thought, God I am abundantly able to succeed in every effort that I truthfully designate. Your next statement will be, God I am the exact knowledge that goes with the ability to succeed. Your next statement will be, God I am the infinite love that attracts all substance to me that brings forth my success. Knowing also that love is the greatest cohesive power in the universe, your next statement will be, God I am the intelligence that guides all of my success into the right and profitable channels. This will be followed by, God I am the divine knowledge and the wisdom that gives the perfect to all of my success, followed with, God I am the perfect trinity, God the conquering Christ, God man, the unfocal point of all creation. We are now dealing with God cells which never lose or change in any way, thus man cannot change from divinity. The brain of man is built of these God cells and this is the very reason that mind never changes. Thoughts may change 1000 times a minute, as they are only reflexes from the subconscious. It is there that man has free will, for he can induce the subconscious to believe and store any thought put forth or that which he perceives or is told by another. This subconscious in no portion of the brain itself but it is a ganglia of true cells located just below the heart center. These cells know neither impurity nor imperfection. They accept and store everything that is thought or spoken and they have no way of discriminating. They also repeat that which they have stored and man soon begins to believe what is repeated as truth. Soon he is unable to segregate truth from falsehood. This group of cells, however, may be influenced to let go of all false statements or falsehoods and accept and register true and absolute statements simply by talking directly to them. Suggest that they let go of all false and negative qualities, thoughts and statements and you will soon be aware that only true and constructive statements are registered in your world, which in turn reflect to you and through you. Then will follow the awareness of a great serenity of purpose. These cells have no way of discriminating except as they are taught. You will find that they are very tractable and most willing to be led or influenced by the truth. Many people have seemed actually to bound forth in response to this application of truth. Hundreds of billions of cells are impelled to do the right thing at the right time and in the right place and, verily, they are obedient at all times as long as the individual is sincere. The life of man pushes forward building, repairing, extending, and creating the new and better with an irresistible urge and energy that is not comprehended by or found in inanimate things. It is found that there is an intelligent instinct and directing influence that pervades every cell of the human form, it does not matter how far they may seem to have wandered from this divine directing influence. It is our privilege to see them in this influence without giving any thought to the outer or that which is holding them under the hypnotic spell. What a privilege it is just to see that one or all who are under the spell really endowed with that infinitely complex cellular structure called the human brain. That same brain has the capacity to carry man or all humanity to the very highest of attainments. What a divine privilege it is to see all humanity combined in this great structure of God-mind. Try this, I am of the noble God-mind, and see it open the windows of heaven and let it pour out such a blessing that it fills completely every avenue of expression. 
All those who are faithful need say, God I am the knowing principle of all things. This opens the eye to the universal abundance that never fails. Try it, knowing positively that you must succeed. As Elijah did, hold out the cup until it is filled to running over. Never doubt the capacity of the one mind. It is always ready to bring forth these wonders, as humanity aligns itself with God mind. As such, humanity has been traced with sufficient evidence to satisfy scientists, for at least one million years but let us see that this period is but an established minimum, for man goes back to an antiquity far beyond all human understanding. You can readily see that you are capable of extending your vision with the inclusion of God mind, or the one mind, to furnish all humanity with a background or buildup that has maintained true to man and divine mind, and how readily you are able to attach your thinking process to divine mind by declaring, God I am divine mind, then knowing definitely that your statement is true and in full accord with divine law and principle. In this way you are fully aware that heaven is all around you, now is the opportune time to know that all are free to accomplish this as you are. Now realize that matter was never conceived until thought set it up as a reality. Remember that matter never smiles, neither does it have any power or energy to rule or master itself, it is also devoid of instinct or volition of its own. It is foreign to all other substance. The bird actually sees its destination of migration and thus does not need an instrument to guide it, that instrument is right within those tiny brain cells. How much greater can the same instrument guide you, for it is right within your brain cells, and mind is in direct control as soon as man knows that he is in full control of mind action. The bird, although it flies over a thousand miles of open water, never loses its direction. Man has this same sense of seeing but he has lost the ability by putting it out of his thought structure. Nothing is ever lost from divine mind. This is the very reason that it belongs to man, for man is as divine as mind. Thus he will never deviate from truth or be at a loss to accomplish all things when he again joins with divine mind. The animal has never lost instinct and intuition for the very reason that it is incapable of building an adverse thought structure. When a dog is set upon the trail of man or beast, he is incapable of thinking, can I do this, consequently he goes forward and follows that trail until something happens that obliterates the scent or the goal is reached. Man is far more capable than the animals or the birds, yet he permits himself to sink lower than the animal. With the true perception of man's fully equipped makeup and his full understanding of his complete inclusion within God or divine mind, man is readily capable of moving from position to position with unbounded velocity, his brain is now fully equipped with true mind and, as he cooperates with true mind as all-seeing and all-knowing, he scales every height instantly and perfectly, there are no wanderings, the path is clear, the evidence is revealed with certainty and sureness. You can put out your hand and feel God. Put your hand on your own form and you both see and feel God. As you may have passed 100 or 1000 people during the day in going about your affairs, you have seen God 100 or 1000 times. This may be repeated each day. Keep God close to you by seeing every living form as God. Then God will be so close to you that you will never again closet God in some far off celestial realm or temple and you will find the temple not made with hands. You will also find that your body is the first and greatest temple ever built and that it is the only temple wherein God abides. Then see the conquering Christ and God-man within this temple. This is the very life that maintains your body. Take God away or separate one from the other and your body would die. Man has built all of the great temples that have ever existed or do exist upon the earth but he has never duplicated this great body temple. It is not only the greatest laboratory ever built, it also has the power of duplicating itself. Man has defiled this body temple to the utmost, even to the place where he is obliged to lay it down in so-called death. Yet it rises again, triumphant. Man, under limitation, is unable to build a human eye but let man throw off every limitation and he is able to build or renew an eye or any part of the human body even to overcoming death. There is a divine intelligence and principle but it was never set up by one being or one man. It was set up by a great civilization of hundreds of millions of people. This thought was set up so dynamically that it saturated every atom of the entire universe as well as every atom of the human body, also, with a directing influence upon all things. It was also set up with such power that it became a directing force of mind action, where nothing changes. 
Thus it impressed its power upon every cell of the human form and the light which denotes this divine intelligence was centered in the first cell to the extent that divinity has been passed on from generation to generation for billions of years, without a change in the real divine image of each unit of humanity. It will go on unchanged for a hundred billion years, as it is established as immutable law, and an established law in the cosmos is unchangeable. Law should be Lord, as there is but one law, one Lord for all established mind action. Man is the Lord in full control of divine law. Out of this great action came millions of years of peace and thorough contentment. Each one was the conquering Christ King of his own domain, yet a willing helper and worker, with no thought of self or selfish ends in that which was the good for all, as an abundance of all things were there for all to use. Then groups claiming free will of thought and action began withdrawing unto themselves. They longed for a change, they wanted to know of material things and to think of themselves rather than the entire group. Thus larger numbers withdrew from the main household, as it was called at that time. Finally the groups of dissenters combined and grew to the extent that their thoughts became chaotic, until the natural elements were thrown into chaos and a great eruption took place within the sun, which lasted for at least a million years. At different intervals have come the planets and stars of our solar universe. Yet prior to this chaotic condition humanity had already set up in definite mind actions such as divine balance that to chaos has come order so divinely exact and perfect that the place any star or planet will occupy at any time can be mathematically determined to the second. This balance is so perfect that there has been no variation for a billion years. This certainly indicates eternity. Thus you can readily recognize perfect law, or Lord in action, and it came into being through a great civilization of the human family and through their united will of perfect understanding through the civilization. To this divine understanding was given the word or name God. It was fully known that this word could be intoned at the greatest vibratory frequency, as it was placed at the head of all language. In the beginning the word in no way represented a human form but it did represent a great divine principle set up by the entire human race. This race lived in heaven, as heaven to them was and as the ever divine principle and harmony within the human form, which is the mind called God. From this word, knowing its divine origin and precepts, every divine condition does come to humanity. This divine, just, and perfect law, or Lord, reigns throughout the entire universe. You now see it throughout the entire solar system but we know that it is just as positive throughout the entire human kingdom as well as in the plant, mineral, and animal kingdoms. During this chaotic disturbance nearly all of those who had withdrawn from the great group were destroyed. Those who were left of this group were obliged to seek shelter in caves and wherever they could find protection. Food became scarce, and just the matter of food became so pressing that a large percentage became cannibals. These conditions, which they brought upon themselves and which not only separated them from the great group but from each other, forced them to form tribes in order to exist, thereby causing them to forget all of their former knowledge, and so they became nomads. These were the forefathers of that race which is called, material. And although this separation has carried on for well over a million years, there still remains something which may be called a half-instinct through which they feel that they have been a part of a divine plan. Many of these are fearlessly coming forth today and freely proclaiming their lordship and a portion have advanced to the point where they are entirely free from all bondage. Those who did stand together in the great group went through all of these chaotic changes in perfect peace and composure without any loss of divinity, as they knew that divinity could never be lost or taken from them. For all this they are in no way claiming any selectivity, neither do they claim any power above that which all can use. During the period that this great civilization reigned upon this earth the great land areas, as well as the seas, were peaceful. There were no land or sea disturbances, the breeze were gentle and invigorating, and all of the people traveled at will wherever they wished, as there was no weight or cumbrances, no limitation of time or space. They thought in terms of eternity. All thoughts and words were put forth as divine precepts and to such a definite purpose that they were firmly fixed and definitely recorded as precepts in divine mind, and these were the foundation and bulwark of a great reservoir that could be drawn upon for every supply, every action, and every undertaking. Thus man had at hand a universal supply for every undertaking and every accomplishment. For all humanity was looked upon as God-Man and the Trinity, or completion, or focal point was God, the conquering Christ, God-Man, the Trinity complete in all. 
There was not a negative word in the language, neither was there a word for a past or a word for the future, all was here and now and completely accomplished and finished. All of the accomplishments that humanity is struggling with today in order to return to this highest state have been accomplished by this so-called higher civilization, and all of the accomplishments are recorded in record form and are accessible to humanity as soon as they will look beyond this so-called material age with its welter of divided precepts and personal accomplishments. All of these accomplishments are perfected and fully recorded definitely in the great storehouse of universal mind substance. They can be called forth by mankind as soon as they still the clamor of those who through their own free will forged the calamity. The greatest hope is for the future generation. It is quite evident that the younger generation is physically, mentally, as well as mechanically the best of all timber, all that is lacking is courtesy and judgment tempered by experience. These qualities will bestow maturity. The greatest substitute and guide is habit, for a good habit is as easy to acquire and as difficult to break as a bad one. It is a well-organized thought by those who are the survivors of that great civilization, that had every individual been carried out by these great chaotic disturbances, that the precepts were so definitely thought out and so thoroughly recorded in the universal mind substance that not one thing would have been lost. It is a well-known fact that every positive word set forth with a true meaning and definite intent is so fully and intelligently recorded in divine mind substance, which we call God mind, including every action and tone, that it can be recalled, also photographic records made to the degree that all may see and hear all of these events. It is a well-known fact that a portion of this great civilization has survived and preserved their identity, Although, they have withdrawn into more or less seclusion, nevertheless they are awaiting the time, which is not far distant, when they may come forth and proclaim their identity. It is now stated that this time will be when a sufficient number have let go of their preconceived ideas of a personal God or great being outside of themselves and accepted the Trinity, God, the conquering Christ, God-man in all, and capable of being set forth through and by all mankind. These records can in no way be varied or distorted, neither can so-called time distort them. These are no miracles or superhuman experiences, they are natural, fixed conditions. In fact, they are of the same fixed law that governs and rules all of the planetary systems of the universe. The wonder is that this law and its influences speak more loudly than any words the greatness of man's ability to achieve, the great beauty and purity of it all is that this was in no way a great dominating or supernatural race, just as you and I are today all in the same image and likeness, the same and one God. Then let us all worship together this one great noble God-man, looking first for the God in all, then seeing the conquering Christ in every face, uniting all in God-man, knowing that every image that is set up outside of man is but an idol with feet of clay that is readily broken by the spoken word. With this you can clothe all science and all religion with the same garment from the one source, as all is one truth. Truth is the law of all science. By thinking divinity man establishes divinity within himself and also add to the great reservoir of cosmic energy and force, that force becoming a great power within itself. You are capable of setting up just such a force and building it to a higher degree of activity. There are millions adding to that force all of the time and you can join them if you will. Questions and Answers Question, where do inspirational ideals come from? Answer, the world of ideas is all about us. You may have any one of several conceptions regarding the meaning of inspirational ideas. Most so-called inspirational ideas are emotional expressions that have little significance other than that of deep feeling. Other inspirational ideas are those flashes of clear-sightedness that enable one to act wisely in an emergency. Possibly the questioner has in mind that profundity of thought achieved by philosophers and saints by means of their disciplines. This is the real, consciously breathing in the spirit of universal wisdom that permeates all space. Question, how do we get inspirational ideas? Answer, in a sense we generate them within ourselves by disciplining our bodies to serve as channels to receive the currents of universal mind and transform the one force in such a way as to intercept the universal laws that are expressed in the diversity of phenomena. Question, why do our ideas seem to come from outside sources? Answer, at our present stage of development we are not prepared to recognize the source of all the forces that are active within us. Life is a universal force which we know in living tissue but we do not know where life comes from or where it goes when it leaves the body. Electricity is used every day, we know it may be generated but we do not know where it comes from. 
To describe thought as a force expressed in ideas that are generated may be somewhat less tangible but the analogy is evident. We think but the source of the energy is hidden, yet we do know that we can increase our thinking capacity and efficiency. Is it any wonder, then, that the average mind is confused when it is said that thoughts come from within? It certainly does seem that they would have to come from without, but so it is with electricity and life. Prepare certain conditions and life and electromotive power are at your disposal. Prepare the mind and inspirational ideas will be generated within you just as surely. Question, what is your attitude toward the present upsetting social conditions? Answer, I do not give them any energy. If we would withdraw the energy we give to thinking about upsetting conditions and build up our own bodily conditions with that energy instead, we could correct any conditions immediately.